How we doing guys? Brandon, Aquatics Galore. We got a UV sterilizer here from Aqua UV. This is the best in the industry. I don't want to uh, put down any other brands, but we've used other brands before. And the ballasts burn up, the bulbs just don't last. Uh, they end up leaking, a lot of different issues. We've been using Aqua UV for some time and they just seem to be the best. The only thing we ever have to replace on these are light bulbs. I believe they say six months on UV bulbs. Uh, I do know that you're not supposed to touch them, so we always try to install them and get them in there without touching them. We go about a year on the bulbs. You definitely don't want to wait till they burn out. There is a gas in them and a certain spectrum you want uh, coming out of them when the water passes through to make sure you're killing your parasites, your green water. The goal is to create crystal clear water. You do want a good quality bulb to do that. So make sure you're getting them replaced before they actually go bad. That way you're producing the best water you can back to your aquarium. What we have, you gotta get this thing open, which doesn't seem to, there we go. Wanna be the easiest thing to do. They are packaged in a nice thick cardboard tube and they are really packaged in there. There we go. So there is your bulb. You can kind of slide it down. Make sure to hold it by the cardboard. You don't want to get the oils from your fingers on the bulb. And we're going to go ahead and stab it into the ballast. And then gently put it into the sleeve. Now, there is a nut on top of here that has a seal around it that gives you more or less slack. So you wanna loosen that up, tighten it onto the already taped threads. Get a nice tight connection there. Slide this back down, tighten this back on. That way the cord isn't pulling the bulb in and out and it's nice and secure in there. Now you can see the sleeve inside here and you have the bulb in there now. So water is going to pass through here. The light's going to kill any green water and send back crystal clear water back to your aquarium. These have little gaskets on them. You slide it through the uh, threaded collar here. Tighten those down. Make sure to get the threading right. I'll always back thread it until it sits right and then tighten her down. But make sure those seals are in there. Whenever I have something that has a gasket or a seal, I make sure it's on there before I set it up. I'm even gonna take this apart right here and make sure the gasket's in there because you never know. There is the gasket. Now this can be touched. This isn't the bulb, this is just the metal or the glass sleeve. But make sure the gasket's good, seated properly before you set anything up. Because nobody wants water everywhere. So, all that's set up properly. We just checked the gasket on that one. Already checked the gasket on the other. Tighten that down. There's also a gasket here. And we checked the threads on the other, and the threads were taped, so we know we're good on that. There is no tape on these threads, so that means there's a gasket in here. We're gonna check and make sure it is seated in place, and it is. We go ahead and put this back together. As much as it is the manufacturer's job to make sure all this is proper, it's going to become your problem if it's not. So it's always best to check just to prevent any problems. Now, it does come with hose barbs. If you want to plumb it, you could always get a three-quarter inch male threaded fitting to three-quarter inch slip, one inch slip, whatever you're wanting. We do like running this with hose. It makes it a lot easier to move around, to get it in and out, replace the bulb. It makes it a lot easier to connect to a pump. So go ahead and thread those in. You can hook up a wrench to it, a pair of pliers, whatever you want, get them real tight, but with them threaded, if you got a little bit of muscle, 
you can tighten them enough by hand. Now there is going to be an in and out on these, so you just want to read the instructions, make sure which way that goes. It's going to be in here, I guess. And there is a large variety of sizes. This is the 25 watt. This is rated for 500 to 1200 gallons. This is a 300 gallon aquarium and they always say at least double. So that's why we went with the 25 watt. There's also a version that has a knob at the end here that you can pull in and out and it'll clean the sleeve keep any algae off of that to make sure that it is getting the best exposure it can. Alright, here's the chart. Water flow out, water flow in. So, by the top of it is the water out and the bottom is water in. So, I suggest labeling that and I've got a sharpie, I'll get that labeled in and out. So, we're going to hook up a pump and we're gonna have a hose connected to it. The hose is going to pump water into this chamber. It's going to go across water for, ex or across the light for exposure. And then we're gonna have a hose hook to discharge it back into the sump. You can hook up Venturi's and a bunch of different things to the end of this hose where it goes back into the sump. And you can have it go, if your water's coming into your sump and flowing this way, you can have the hose discharge and blow back here so you can create a tumbling effect for your macro. There's a lot of different things you can do with that. That's one of them we enjoy doing. Let us know how you hook them up and different ways you like doing it. Let us know your thoughts on inline or standalone in the sump. And make sure to like and follow. Thanks for watching.